Hi, Amy. Yes, how sir. are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So, how's your mathematics going on? Uh, yeah, really good. Um, definitely, I'm finding the pure side much easier than the stats. But yeah, it's all like kind of different because it's more like physics -y. <laughs> That's the okay. reason I didn't choose like physics. So, but anyway, we have all these Newton stuff. So yeah, that um, that comes into thing. Now it's half term, so I'm going to do a lot of practice on maths because I um, kind of pushed it aside a little bit during the like it was quite stressful. So now I'm going to yeah focus a lot more on maths. Great, great. So <clears throat> we can actually talk about Newton's second law today, and based on that, we'll have a word problem. I'll try okay. to provide you with a solution, uh, giving you the base rather the foundation for doing similar questions. So while just solving one example, I'll give you a complete mm -hmm. concept of how do we solve such questions, right? All right. So yeah. let me just share with you um, the lesson which I prepared. <clears throat> so as I was saying, we'll talk about Newton's second law of motion. We'll cover these topics as a part of solution of our question, which is also mentioned here. We'll state what the Newton's second law is, how is mass and acceleration related? It actually defines them. What are the units of force? That is also very mm -hmm. interesting. And how are they related? Uh, some assumptions, many questions. We have a string pulling uh, the objects, right? We have a pulley and things like that. So in all these problems, so we have to draw a force uh, uh, diagram, and in that diagram, what should be the assumptions, right? That is very important to understand. Right. And then we will actually mm -hmm. take the example and solve this particular question. So Abby, can you please read this question here? Yeah. Two boxes with mass of 12 kilograms and 10 kg are resting on a table. The horizontal force of 40 newtons is applied by a person to the 10 kg box as shown in the figure. Find the acceleration of each box and find the tension in the cord. Correct. So that's the type of question. Rather, this is the question which we are going to solve in this particular video. Uh, but before that, we'll understand all these concepts. Now, a few important things is when you see the units like right, 12.0 kg, 10.0 and 40.0, it clearly indicates that we are talking about three significant figures. So if nothing is mentioned, you have to write your answer to three significant figures. Is that clear to you? Oh, yes. So at yeah. this level, uh, many times you're in the test paper, your teacher may not write that, write the answer to three significant figures, but looking at the question itself, you should decide what should be this number of significant figures for this particular question, okay? Right. Yeah. Now, since this is mathematics and not physics, we'll kind of dilute it. But if this would have been a physics, that's, <laughs> in that case, you have to be very precise. Okay. All right. Yeah. Perfect. You can also extend this question. That is to say, I'm only taking two masses, right? I'm taking mass one and mass two. However, in this question, we could have many other objects, masses in between, similar to these. Think about a train. Mm -hmm. A train going with a lot of um, bogies with it, right? Many compartments, right? So engine mm -hmm. is pulling them up and we have, uh, let's say, 10, 20 of those um, rails with it, right? So in that case, we can actually adopt the same method. You can think that M2 is all rest of the boxes. You get my point. M2 all right. is okay. the rest of the boxes. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. so even if there are 10 yeah. boxes in this kind of a situation, since you know we are applying the concepts of vectors, when we say mass, we are assuming that to be concentrated at a point which is right at the center, correct? Mm -hmm. If there yeah. are many objects, we can treat all that box as one box, correct? And we can call that as yeah. two. We can call that as two, and then solve this yeah. question in a very similar fashion. You you understand the idea? Um, yeah. So that yeah. Makes yeah. It extremely <laughs> flexible. So if in your test paper, instead of two, there are three boxes or 10 boxes, you can still adopt the same method and get the solution. Is that clear to you? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Now, nothing has been mentioned about the friction. So we'll assume that the surface is like there is no friction between the box and the surface. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Back, so unless they say, uh, unless they state otherwise, then you just assume there's no friction. Yes. And so there oh. are, as you, as you can realize now, with every question, there are a lot of assumptions which you need to write down sometimes in the test paper also. That could be a part mm -hmm. of your question. What are the assumptions based on which you got this solution? Is Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Be open and like these are the important things which sometimes students miss out and they lose a lot of marks because you know solving a question could be five marks, but all other things could also be five marks, right? Right. So yeah. That's very important to understand. So let's begin with what second law is exactly. Okay. So uh, Amy, uh, second law I've kind of stated here. So I like you to read what is written here. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to its mass. The direction of um, acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. Correct. So acceleration A, net force is sum of all the forces acting at a point, right? So at that point, mm -hmm. all the forces. That really means that if I'm going to draw any diagram, in that case, all the arrows which I'm drawing, they will be originating from one particular point only. You get my idea, right? All right, yeah. yeah. This is very important, right? So at this particular mm -hmm. point, we are just adding all the forces and we're calling that as a net force. The statement okay. which I've given you here is not exactly second law of Newton, but it is kind of an explanation of that. So I'd like you to write down Newton's second law from your notebook, word to word. So when they say state Newton's second law of motion, you have to write exactly what is stated in your book. Is that clear to you? Oh, right. Okay. Now, yeah. what does it really imply? That is what I've written here. Right? So, so don't go mm -hmm. with that topic. I just wrote Newton's second law, but realized, well, I'm actually, because I'm solving mathematics paper, not physics paper. Correct? So that's the whole idea. Right. right. So we will deviate, yeah. as I was saying, right in the beginning many ways right so it is not a solution to a physics student okay it's for the mechanics mm -hmm. mathematics gcsc right yeah <laughs> Let's be clear about it. so the acceleration yeah. here is sum of forces divided by inversely proportional to the mass you can mm -hmm. rearrange this particular equation and say well the sum of forces is equal to ma now what it really means is that from the diagram shown, let us say that these two forces are equal, right? It doesn't look like, but let us say these yeah. two forces are equal. That means the object is yeah. not going up or down, right? So we can say force up equals to force down. Then there is no movement <laughs> up or down, correct? Now, let's say this force F1, and this is the force F2, right? And let us assume that F1 is greater than F2. Right. Okay. In that case, there is a net force, we'll call this force as Fn, which is in right direction because F1 is pulling to the right, F2 is pulling to the left. Right. If there is a net force, then the object will move. Correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, if suppose F1 is equal to F2, then acceleration is zero because net force is zero, right? Because F2 right. minus F1 is zero. So if that is zero, right? So zero equals to MA, mass cannot be zero, mass is constant, right? right. So acceleration is yeah. zero. If we're talking about equilibrium where the two forces are equal, right? So that is the case mm -hmm. which you had done earlier where we were talking about equilibrium forces, right? Yeah. So yeah. in that case, acceleration is not there. But in our example, a force is applied so that there is some extra force which will move the object. And we are interested in finding the acceleration of the object, correct? That was a part of the question. Yeah. So now, can you please read this? From Newton's second law, we can make a more precise definition of force as an action capable of accelerating an object. Perfect. So force is necessary for acceleration to exist. You understand? Oh, right. That is very important. And we're talking now about a constant acceleration in this particular case, right? So when we say F equals to mm -hmm. MA, we, and we apply a constant force, 
mass is constant acceleration will also right. be constant acceleration will yeah. also be a constant in this case you understand so if a force of let's say 10 newtons is applied to an object and it moves then it will move with a constant acceleration a correct mm -hmm. now let's look into the units of force so worldwide we use si or mks units perfect during our time this transition was taking place cgs system was there and the british unit system was also there most mm -hmm. difficult for us while doing engineering was to work with the british units they are like still crazy right <laughs> <laughs> the world over has changed to the mks system however since you are from england uh, you know mm -hmm. they have still not dropped their valuable british units so they are still existing and i thought let me just uh, give you overview of these units also before getting into details since you might yeah. get something in british units right All right force in mks or si units is newtons and as we said f is ma that means mass mks mass uh, mks is the units meters kilograms and seconds so mass is in kilograms and acceleration is meters per second square so 1 newton is basically 1 kg meters per second square correct <laughs> when we talk about cgs then length unit so this is like length unit is centimeters right and the mass unit is grams per cent time unit is second second square and that is called one dime so oh. dime is a unit in cgs relation between dime and newton is since gram is 1000 and centimeter is 100th so one dime is 10 to the power of minus 5 newtons is that clear to you right yeah divide by 1000 divide by 100 10 to the power of minus 5 now let's get to the british unit so the unit is pound Right? When you buy grocery sometimes, you buy a pound of something, correct? Yep. So weight is a force. Weight is a force, correct? So, mm -hmm. so that is that pound unit for force. And one pound is, so what is the unit for mass in British unit system? Do you know that? It mm -hmm. is called slug. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen, ever seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> and All right. feet per second square. It is surprising, you know. Uh, <laughs> you, you yeah, I've only seen this. You're never going to know your minutes. pounds and your units, right? <laughs> After all, the no. heritage which you want to carry forward with, right? <laughs> yeah. Many times That's when true. I talk to students in North America, they don't even understand LB is pound, right? They say, well, I got five LB of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really get that but yeah right fine i like you to read this statement one slug is the mass which will undergo an acceleration of one feet per second squared um when a force of one pound is applied to it very important now this is very important from you know some like you have some um, brain teasers or sometimes some competitions yeah, where yeah. tricky questions are asked. So these That's are true. like things which we have forgotten about. Somebody might just ask you that. But people near uh -huh. you are more concerned with one kg. Can you please read <laughs> what right. one kg is? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if I ever hear now one slug, at least I know like what it is and what it's about and yeah. what it is in acceleration. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So what is one kg? Please read this also. All right. One kg is the mass which will undergo an acceleration of one meter per second squared when a force of one newton is applied to it. Be clear about it. This is very important definition. And many times you need to write this. What is one kg? Oh. This is the question. Right. So it is word for word. Okay. Newton's second law. There are many things into it. So while we review right. it, it's a good concept to understand all these things. Now, let me yeah, take definitely. you to the assumptions which we started with so always whenever you have a question you have to model this situation and when you do that you need to do some assumptions right so i like you to read this part what is written there 
Okay, so when a flexible cord pulls an object, the cord is said to undergo tension and the force it exerts on the object is the tension Ft. Correct. So in our diagrams, we'll always have a mass which is represented by a box and then it will be pulled by a string, which we will say cord. Now this cord wow. will always be, uh, it will have some properties, right? It is always considered to be a light object in extensible string. That is the importance of the cord, correct? So once again, when a flexible cord pulls an object, the cord is said to be under tension. It is that if I am pulling it with a force, which is, let us say, F, Mm -hmm. In that case, there is a tension, and we call that force as equal and opposite force F of T. Do you see that? So when you pull, uh, then F of T is the force, which actually acts from the string to the object. So equal right. and opposite force acting at this particular stage. Now, if I have to simply draw this in a particular diagram, which I'm saying is a vector diagram for representing the situation, right? force okay. diagram you can see. In that case, I'll represent force F in this direction and assume the mass to be at a point here, right in the center. And that becomes that point. Tails together, I will translate this force here and I'll say this is F of T. Do you understand this portion? So this force, okay, so which I'm representing as yeah. F of T in this direction, will be moved yeah. to translate the vectors, right? They remain the same. Vector has mm -hmm. two parameters. One is the direction, the other one is the magnitude. So length of this arrow is the yeah. magnitude, which is equal to that of the force in this particular case, and the direction is reversed. So that is how we are going to represent this particular situation. That is to say, the cord is said to be under tension. And wait. Yes. Sorry, is the um, force, you know, when you said it's equal but opposite, is it always equal but opposite? Yes. The can, can the tension always... ever be more? No, oh, the, okay. If the object is stationary, <laughs> let's, tell you, let's say it's the object stationary. Oh. If, this means if they are equal, right, that means acceleration is zero at this moment. When mm -hmm. it moves, then there yeah. is an acceleration. Is it okay? So yeah. when you start pulling, then there is a tension which will be same as that of the force when it is stationary. Oh. Then there will oh. be a situation when the force will be greater than the tension, right? In that case, yeah, yeah. it moves forward. Right. Acceleration is greater than zero oh. in that case. Correct? So, okay. yeah. try to understand. Yeah. So, when a flexible, I'm using the word flexible cord pulls an object, the cord is said to be under tension and the force it exerts on the object is tension Ft. So we'll just use this nomenclature. You can write T okay. also. So that is the force which it exerts backwards, which is F of T. And if you make it in a diagram, it should be represented like this. All the tails at one point, and that happens to be the center of the mass. Okay? Right. And yeah. that's how you're going to draw it. So important thing here is, that cord is inextensible with negligible mass. So this cord has no mass at mm -hmm. all, and it cannot be extended. It's like fixed length. And yeah. flexible cord can only pull and cannot push. So this force cannot push the object. It can only pull the object. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say. Yes. It is a oh, because you said it's flexible. How can it? It can't. Yeah. It will just go like that. Yeah, yeah, very important have to, uh, basic things which we are talking about at present. We'll get to the solution soon. Don't worry about it. Now, what is a light object? Can you please read these two points which I've read, uh, uh, written about the light objects? Yes. Please. Yeah. So the mass of the object is negligible compared to other masses. Light object. And the force. E oh yeah. Mm. And the force exerted at one end is transmitted undiminished um, to each adjacent piece of cord along the entire length to the other end. So the tension is the same at both ends of a light string. Very important. So what we're trying to say here is that if I have another object here, and if I have similar cord attached, then <laughs> this is also FT. Because the same force is transmitted to the cord if we are talking about the same oh. cord. 
So it doesn't it. matter how many things go like connected to it, the tension will stay the same. same. Ft. You get the idea. Oh. Very important to understand yeah. these concepts, correct? So that is now also read what do we understand by inextensible string? So it's a string that does not stretch. Mm -hmm. And the acceleration is the same in objects at both ends of a light string. Correct. So acceleration is also same at both the ends. So if this accelerates with A, that also accelerates with A. That is important. So if my force F is more than the tension, both the objects with that string in between will actually move with exactly the same acceleration A. You, you understand this part now. Okay? All right. Okay. Yeah. I just added this point mm -hmm. in another video. We'll talk about system with pulleys. So can you please read okay. the meaning of smooth and light pulley? Yeah. So um, a, a pulley has no mass and the tension is the same on either side of the pulley. Very important to understand and difficult to understand. How can a pulley have no mass, right? <laughs> Can't get it. What we yeah. do, yeah. it's such a big thing, right? So we just put a point here in the center. So we just put a peg there. Do you understand? We have put a peg there. Yeah. So now it has got no mass because everything is on that peg. Do you understand? The center of the mass has been nailed and pulley is free to move. So in our examples, if it is free to move, let's say, then the mass of the pulley can be treated as negligible. You get my point? Because it Only because there's something in the center. Yeah, 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 it's free to move. That is how we uh, have to see a pulley. And this is the string which is inextensible and supposed to be lightweight. So all mm -hmm. these things are very important to understand. And then we should actually begin uh, by solving our question. So you have a good foundation now. Do you understand all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just, just a quick yeah. thing yeah. Um, with the pulley. So let's just say something heavy was on this side. And so it goes like that. Yeah. So this is really heavy. Yeah. How would the tension be the same? No, no. Like uh -huh. on this side, on this side. Tension will be same, direction will be reversed. See, because the tension is, if the pulley is moving, let's, now let me just draw it here, okay? So let's say this is the pulley. And as you were saying, let's say we have some object here. And That's heavy. Small, yeah, let's yeah. small. Correct. In that case, this pulley is going to move downwards because this object is greater than the other object. Correct. Yeah. So the tension basically will be, in this case, this will be your tension T. Right here, the object is going up, so the tension will be T will be reverse. Acceleration is upwards, so the MA oh. force will be up. Here, force is down. Oh, I didn't think about it like that. Oh, okay, now yeah, yeah, yeah. pulling it down. That's clear. <laughs> yeah, is going yeah. To go up. tension is going to pull it so down. So that's why it's the same. All yeah. right. I thought the tension was going the same direction on both sides, but it's not because the force is going up here and down here. So the tension will be opposite direction. No, no, yeah. See the, yeah. See the thing, how tension is translating. See, the tension is going in this direction. Do you see that this direction? So if you just go around mm -hmm. this, yeah. let's go around this, then tension will be in this direction. Is it okay? Right. So it's actually going mm -hmm. down. That's right? clear. Kind of same thing. Yeah. Pulleys, pulley is a machine which helps you because there's a change in direction. It is easier mm. to pull yeah. than to push. So, so when you want yeah. to draw water from the well, it helps since you are pulling it. Do you understand? So it's a machine. Right. Because pulling and then it's working. gives you that additional gravitational force. It's easier. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's a okay. simple machine which translates the same force, but the direction is important. Opposite, yeah. Oh, so you okay. pull, it is easier to pull, and then you can lift heavy things. But if you just want to lift it like this with the same force, it is very it's... difficult. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah that's so clear. Pulley is a machine which changes direction, and that makes all the difference. Okay. Oh. So I think you have understood right. all the assumptions and basic structures for mass, pulley, string, <laughs> and all this. All the examples which we are going to consider where there'll be constant acceleration and a constant force applied. In that case, these are the assumptions of prime importance, okay? Yeah. Now let's mm -hmm. get back to our question, which is, once again, <clears throat> this is the question. 
two boxes with mass of 12.0 kg and 10.0 kg are resting on a table as shown here the horizontal force 40 newton is applied by a person to the 10 kg mass as shown in the figure you need to find two things one find the acceleration of each box we know this acceleration is going to be constant and is going to be same for each mm -hmm. box find the tension in the core f of t e. so we have to find the tension in the core that is what the question is now to begin with what are important things first thing is you need to draw a free body diagram or a force diagram to understand the situation then you should be describing all your assumptions which we discussed earlier relate all the parameters uh, which will give you equations to solve and then solve your equation so these are the steps to be followed correct mm -hmm. whenever you are going to solve such a question now let us begin with drawing the free body diagram so to draw the free body diagram let's consider first the the mass m1 right and and this mass okay. we are applying a force fp pulling it to the right as shown here with 40 newtons of force right as soon as we pull this there will be a tension and we are calling that tension to be f of t right so this is the tension which will be yeah. in the reverse direction as i explained earlier strictly speaking all these lines are actually originating from the center of the body so i'm not actually messing it right. up but i'm showing you all of them are actually starting with the center of the body and yeah. since the object is not flying up or down the reaction is equal to the the weight exerted on the table and therefore the weight exerted is m1g mass of the first box and therefore that will be equal to the normal force on the first box so many times yeah. you have to only draw a i should say a free uh, body uh, force uh, vector diagram for an object let's say a book on the table correct so that means this part only that means we have a force which is equal to mg going downwards and we have a reaction you can say normal to that which is equal and opposite and therefore the object is on the table in our situation yeah. we have an additional force applied here and we are calling this force as f this force is going to move mm. right for sure <laughs> so the right. object moves with an acceleration a right but once it starts moving the string will apply a tension in this particular direction which i am representing here and calling that as f, f of t, t. so that mm -hmm. is how i have made my diagram is this clear to you yeah perfect so that is your first body which is m1 the second m2 if you look at this particular diagram now this force which is coming to this side is exerting the same force on the second body but it has to be in the opposite direction it starts pulling it right and therefore this mm -hmm. is shown on the second body f of t this f of t and that f of t should be of equal length i have not drawn them but they should have been of the equal length they are the same forces because we know that the string is flexible and therefore the same force is transmitted so everywhere in between All right. the yeah. force is going to be exactly same but now the mass is different and therefore the acceleration will be what acceleration you know is mass i mean the force and mass and relation is f equals to ma right so even if yeah. the force is same right depending on the mass we can actually find what ft is will be m2 times a is that clear to you yeah In this particular situation so i think the diagram is clear to you is it clear to you and yeah it is mm -hmm. can you please read this part explanation on the same The force Fp acts on box one. Box one exerts force Ft on the connecting cord, and the cord exerts an opposite but equal magnitude force Ft back on box one. Very good. Now this part. Since the cord is considered to be massless, then the tension on each end is the same. 
Hence, the cord exerts a force FP on the second box, box two. This force can only pull, but not push. It should be FT, right? Tension. And this force can only pull. Oh, not yeah. Is that clear to you? That is how we yeah. get both our free body diagrams or the force diagram for the given situation. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Now, as yeah. I was saying, if this M2 could be many boxes. M2 could be many boxes, right? Right. So same type yeah. of diagram. Okay. Now, let's see. How do we solve such a question once we have made the um, diagram for it? Correct. So we have two boxes. Let's begin with the box number one. So in box number one, clearly, we have FP, which is the right side move, and FT is the tension mm -hmm. on the left side. Since the object is moving, we know that FP, that is going to pull it, is greater than the tension. And therefore, it moves. And from the second law, we know that that should be equals to MA. Since the mass of this first box is M1, I have written FP minus FT equals to M1A. Clear? Yeah. Very simple, mm -hmm. right? Second box. Yeah. In the second box, it is the tension which is pulling it. And therefore, that tension should be equals to M2 into A. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Now, what so is this one you don't need to do any subtraction because the force pulling you just is the tension and there's nothing there's else. There's nothing else on the other side. So it's just getting pulled, right? right. So in a yeah. train, you can think about that to be the last compartment, which is just getting pulled. Um, <laughs> getting right. Yeah, yeah. Right? So oh, that's a nice way of thinking. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that could be a question, right? So to make this right. very complicated, I could have, you know, added 10 cars to it. <laughs> and then the, yeah. what is the, the last car what is the acceleration of the last car what is the whatever right <laughs> on the last car <laughs> yeah so that is what it is correct? yeah that's Good. clear so now um, what, yeah. to solve this we have two equations two unknowns we'll just add equation one and equation two so when you add you realize that ft and ft will cancel correct on the left side yeah so oh, that is I what see. I've done. So I've just added, and on the right side, you get M1A plus M2A. Acceleration is constant, mm -hmm. as we have understood, right? So FP is equal to A times M1 plus M2, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So acceleration is rearrange your equation. So we get our formula, which is the pulling force, which is given to us as 40 newtons, divided by the sum of the masses. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. That is the acceleration. Yeah. In our case, it was 40, 10, and 12. You should write with one decimal zero, okay? And write down your answer to three significant figures. 1.82 meters per second squared becomes the acceleration in this particular case. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So in general, you could also write this formula as whatever force you're pulling with, with sum of all the masses. Do you see that? Yeah. There could be any number right. of them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That makes sense. And the acceleration will be constant within each box. That's the point. You don't have to think. of If there's a multiple choice question, just divide with all the sum of masses. You get uh, F is M. Yeah. Right? And that's why, if you see the formula itself, we use that sigma term. You see that? We use the sigma term. It is yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say with the good convention, you, yeah, you could add all these sum of masses, right? And get to the solution just as we got here, right? Now, mm -hmm. we need to find FT, right? So clearly, what is FT? So we can always use the second equation, which directly gives us the value of FT, the tension. Mm -hmm. M2 times A, we have already calculated the value of A as 1.82. So we'll multiply 1.82 by the mass of the second object, M2, and get the answer. So the tension is 21.8 Newtons. So do you always recommend, like, um, if they have questions where it's like, um, I think at school we said, like, connected particles because they're, like, kind of connected. Yes. And like you said, like, with the train, the last carriage, since that has no other force acting yeah. in that direction, do you always recommend, subbing, if they said find the force of the tension, do it on the last one? because there'll be less forces to deal with or like less calculations.
equation, I mean, because like if you did it with the first equation, you've got FP minus FT and then it's just a bit longer. You do like this. <laughs> that make any M sense. <laughs> M2 to MN, right? Yeah, yeah. So just take that as a block. So your system is still the same. First object and the rest of the others put in together. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, yeah. And if you're only interested in the first box, in that case, just don't bother about anything. This is some of all the boxes. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> F equals oh, to MA, yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Just add all the masses yeah. together, because all are together, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, then all get, and then you get this formula. Acceleration is the force divided by the sum of masses. Did you see that part? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. good to visualize. And now you found this. They will say acceleration on the last. Well, then the last one is separately treated. And whatever the mass of Mn is, multiply this with acceleration, which you have calculated. And that gives you the tension in the last compartment. Perfect. Yeah, that's clear. Correct. So that yeah. is how. So, so, yeah. Sorry, I was just saying, like, so to find the acceleration, you just simply take the force that's being like applied and then divide it by the sum of all the masses. Perfect. And then if they ask for the acceleration or no, for like maybe the tension or something for that individual box, then you just take the acceleration you calculated times it by the mass, which it will be given and you got your tension. You're right. You're right. So that oh, is how we are going to I do see. it. So for example, let me just change this question. And let's say we have one mass, two mass, three mass, four marks, right? And let's say they're all connected. Yeah. Right, and this is the fourth F, right? Uh, let's say mass is same, mm -hmm. right? So let's say M1, okay. M2, they could be different. How does it matter, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Basically, you will say F equals to M1 plus M2 plus M3 yeah. plus M4 and A. Yeah. Let me write A in a different ink, A. So you directly get A from here. Do you see that? Yeah. So A is equals to F over sum of masses. Sum of all of them. Oh, yeah. I see. Now, if I tell yeah. you, find the tension here. Find the tension at this place. Why mm -hmm. last? It could be somewhere in between also, right? Oh, OK. Yeah. So at this place, let's call this as F of tension in this place, uh, then F of t will be equals to, we can add these two masses together, right? Yeah. M3 plus M4 times A. A is calculated already. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so That's nice. OK, this. yeah. All right. OK, yeah. But same, yeah, same principle applies. That's nice. Sure. OK. That is how you're going to solve such a question. Correct? All right. Yeah. Now, Amy, can you just tell me what have you learned today about Newton's second law and how do we solve related questions? Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, we started off just talking about um, like Newton's second law and then um, talking about the units that are the standard units and then the different ones in British and things, just to be aware of it. Um, but yeah, we have to, units are really important because if you write yeah. something in the wrong unit, then that's just a mark lost. So um, yeah, even though it's not a physics paper, <laughs> units are still important in maths as well. So yeah. And then we talked about assumptions. Um, I really needed to get my head around this because I didn't really understand it at school. But um, yeah, so these are important because you make a lot of assumptions when it comes to these questions. Um, so let's just like, like you said, um, so when something's getting pulled along, if the friction's not mentioned, you have to assume there's no friction, stuff like that. Yeah. And then we talked about the light object, inextensible string, um, the tension acting in the equal but opposite direction, things like that when it's stationary and stuff.
Um, and then you also touched upon the pulley, but you said yeah. we'll do more about that next lesson. Next, next lesson. Uh, then we worked on um, this uh, free body diagram and the rules that you've written in the strategy and concept are really important to follow, like even step by step, because without the diagram in like a free body diagram, if you don't draw it in the exam, it can get very confusing. Um, because what happened if they say, like you said, sir, in the last one, you said individually, like that tension in between that, if you don't draw the diagram or the individual one, you can let's say miss out that mass and then you stop adding the one that was previous than that and then it just uh, being correct so always remember um to draw the diagrams and then um label it such that it, like f of t for the tension i think it's much easier that way because um it's a force and things like that and if you've got um, several different masses label them as f2 no, sorry, M2, M1, like that, because it's better than writing out 50 kg every time because that's time wasting, you know? Um, and yeah, then we just, uh, again, in our answer, maybe the question would be like, also tell me the assumptions and we just learned about that. So you just write them out. And yeah, we the final thing that you talked about was when finding the acceleration, you take the force divided by the total mass and yeah. you've got your acceleration and then just work from there. Simple as that. So, yeah. so if you understand these basic principles, half of your questions will be mm -hmm. so simple. I'm, I'm really telling you, right? So yeah. try some questions from your book, Amy, and if there's any difficulty, do let me know. Uh, we'll, as I said, okay. take examples based on pulleys uh, tomorrow itself, right? Mm -hmm. and, and do let me know if there is any difficulty. We'll touch upon that also. So I hope that was okay, interesting sir. and you learned Thank you so something. much. Thank you. I did, definitely because I was trying to do these questions and I think I was just really making it really complicated but the way you explained it now I think it's yeah really straightforward so I'm going to go attempt them and see if I can do it again because yeah so thank you so much sir and uh, have a good weekend thank you and same to you and I'll see you next time we'll continue bye sir bye Amy <laughs>